This next problem is called a tree takes on graphs. Your friend at Stanford has made some sus statements about graphs and you're pretty sure they're all false, but you wanna help your friend see why, right? Because you are so kind hearted and generous that even though your poor friend at Stanford is a little misguided, you wanna help. So for each of the following parts, provide a counterexample that disproves their totally false statement. The first very wrong thing your Stanford friend said was that every graph has one unique MST. So think about a graph that would disprove this statement to them. You can take a moment on your own and then we'll go over it. And so hopefully you've maybe thought of a graph that could disprove this. I'll walk you through my process. So we know that the thing that leads to non-unique MSTs is when you have duplicate edge weights, right? And I'm gonna to try to come up with a very simple example, not too complicated because we don't need to go all crazy, right? To prove this. So why don't we just start with a simple three node graph, a really small example. So we start with the simple three node example. And because we know duplicate edges are where we sort of see this non-unique behavior, why don't we just make all the edges the same? right? And if you look at this graph we've just made, we realize the valid MSTs here are both A, B, C this way, as well as, oops, this way, as well as this way, right? And so we've constructed this awesome little example where there's actually three valid MSTs. All of these um, below trees include all the nodes in our original graph. They are fully connected and they all have the same minimum weight of two. And so this is one example that can disprove um, your Stanford friend. There's a lot more examples out there, but um, yeah, this is one way to disprove them. The next part says, no matter what heuristic you use, a star search will always find the correct shortest path. Again, take a moment and think about this on your own first. And so this one is a little tricky or it's a little interesting, right? And let's take, take a moment and think about what makes A star search correct or how it really works. The idea with A star search is that you know how far you've come already and you have this heuristic that gives you an estimate for how far you have to go. Sorry, that was my laundry timer. Um, so anyways, you have this estimate for how far you have left to go. And this estimate guides you and helps you make decisions, right? And so if, if for example, your estimate tells you, oh, um, you're 10,000 steps away from the goal, you're not gonna take that path, right? Because the heuristic is guiding you in the right direction. So let's imagine an example where you have a start and you have a goal and there are two different paths, right? And we're thinking about this and we just know that we want to somehow make a source search incorrect. And let's say our heuristic guided us in the totally wrong direction. Well, then a star search wouldn't go down the correct shortest path if our heuristic was totally wrong. Keeping this in mind, let's construct an example where let's say taking C is the correct shortest path, it costs one. Whereas taking B will cost, let's say 10. But let's say our heuristic was completely misguided and the heuristic says, oh, don't go down this correct path. Don't go down this one because uh, as the heuristic, I think it's going to cost us 1000. And I think B only costs 10. And let's say our hero secure said, I don't know, A is like 11, right? And of course the heuristic um, from the goal to the goal is zero because we estimate that once we're at the goal, it takes us zero steps to get to the goal where we already are, right? So these orange numbers are here are heuristics. And what we're gonna see with an example like this where our heuristic completely misguides us is that A star search is going to first add B and C to the priority queue, right? Um, and so we're starting at A and our priority queue gets B with priority 11. 
because it's one distance away from the start and we estimate it's 10 farther from the goal. And C gets added to the priority queue with distance or priority 1001 because it is one distance away from the start and we're estimating it's another 10,000 steps from C to the goal. So those are the priorities in the queue. And then we're gonna pop B off the queue. And from here we see, okay, what's next? Well, the goal is there with a total distance of 11 and the heuristic is one. And so the goal gets added to the queue now with priority 11. And again, this is higher priority than C. So we pop the goal off next. And once you pop the goal off, we've found it. And so we stop. And so on this graph with these heuristics, A star search would return this as the shortest path, but that is totally incorrect. And so I want to emphasize that I just ran through what A star search would actually do, implementing it with our priority queue. But from a high level, on a quick glance, hopefully we can see that A star search, the real reason this is happening is because A star search is being misguided by this terrible heuristic, which told us, don't bother with this path, it sucks. When in reality, that was the correct shortest path. This goes for this idea of a heuristic being admissible and consistent, which are terms that are not um, really in scope for this class. You just have to know the definitions, not how to apply them. But the idea is that a, a, a heuristic that is consistent and admissible isn't going to give you totally wacky and overestimated um, like guesses for the distance to the goal. So if your heuristic is not admissible and consistent, or in other words, if it sucks, a star search is not guaranteed to be correct. And that's problem to be. There are a lot of other examples that could disprove your silly Stanford friend. This is just one that we came up with. Finally, we're gonna move on to problem to see. The last very misguided statement your friend at Stanford made was that if you add a constant factor to each end of the graph, the Ictus algorithm will return the same shortest paths tree. So what they're saying is that let's say before Dijkstra's um, given some graph says, oh, these are all the shortest paths from the start to every other node. And your friend is saying you could add a constant to every single edge and Dijkstra's would give the same exact answer as before you had added those constants. So we can take a moment and think about this problem and think about a graph that would disprove that. And so the first thing I want to think about is the fact that Dijkstra's algorithm ultimately doesn't care about the number of edges, right? Or at least it shouldn't. Dijkstra's algorithm is just going off the edge cost of a path. And so it doesn't matter whether this path from, let's say, A to your goal, G, is one edge and it costs 100, or if it's, you know, 100 edges that each cost one, right? In Dijkstra's, both of these should be considered valid paths because Dijkstra's is only going based off the edge um, weight total, right? But now let's consider, what if we were adding a constant factor to each edge in a graph? Then would these two paths that I've drawn be equal? Let's say our constant was K. Well, now, this total path after adding the constant would be 100 plus K. But what about this path on the bottom? If we add a cost of K to every single edge, just like we did here, what's the total cost of the path gonna be? Well, this edge is gonna be one plus K, this edge is gonna be one plus K, et cetera, for all 100 things in between. And so now, well, this path was originally of cost 100 because we assumed there were 100 nodes here. The total cost of the path is going to be 100 plus 100K. And so if there were 100 edges that used to previously each cost one, now they all cost one plus K. And so that's how we get this answer. And so we can see that when we add a constant factor to each edge in a graph, it actually changes the way Dijkstra's um, is going to say like which paths are shorter or equal, right? And so taking this, can we now construct a graph that sort of behaves in this way? One simple example we could do 
would maybe be to have something like this. And so this path has more edges, but let's say that previously this path used to be better, right? I had a total path weight from A to D of three, whereas this path would have been five or four. And so again, what we just saw was that when you add a constant factor to each edge in a graph, it disadvantages paths with more edges. And so keeping this in mind, we realize if we added a constant k here, this constant is going to disadvantage this path more because they this total path gets 3k added to what it was previously, whereas this path only gets k added twice to what it, to what it was previously. And so if your constant is like big enough to outweigh the previous advantage that this path on the top had, then we would see the shortest path from A to D now becomes going through E when you add some K. And so we've just proved your Stanford friend. We constructed this simple graph that shows adding a constant factor to each edge in the graph will alter some of your shortest paths because adding a constant factor to each edge in a graph disadvantages paths with more edges because you're adding that constant factor more times to that total path length. And that is all of two.